Hey, my name is Patrick Radden Keefe. I'm a journalist with The New Yorker magazine, and I've made a new podcast called Wind of Change, which is an eight part investigation into a crazy story that I heard years ago that the famous 1990 power ballad Wind of Change by the heavy metal band Scorpions was secretly written by the CIA. And I'm about, apparently about to take a, uh, a pop quiz to test my knowledge of hair metal and geopolitics. And uh, I'm, I'm bracing myself for what may be a, a pretty disastrous outcome. So we, we have 10 questions, many of which are on the intersection between uh, hair metal and politics in the Cold War, some of which are just on hair metal specifically. So uh, we'll be interested to see uh, how deep your research went for your oh, podcast. God. <laughs> so question one, um, Scorpion's Wind of Change may be the most famous rock anthem tied to the end of the Cold War, but it isn't the only one. Which American actor slash singer famously sang his Cold War anthem, Looking for Freedom, while sitting in a crane above the Berlin Wall in 1989? The Hoff, man. Of course I know that one. David Hasselhoff. One for one. Very nice. Okay. The U.S. Question number two. The U.S. government may have promoted heavy metal abroad during the Cold War, but back home, many politicians saw the music as amoral and dangerous. Amid congressional calls for censorship and parental warnings, Dee Snyder, the lead singer for which glam rock supergroup, had to testify before Congress to refute Tipper Gore's claim the band was promoting bestiality and sadomasochism in their music. This is so embarrassing. I know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I knew. I once knew. The answer is Twisted Sister. Twisted Sister. D. Snyder. Okay. <laughs> okay. You are showing me up here. This is not good. <laughs> I, I, should, I, should, I should say I am not an actual rock journalist. <laughs> okay. Question three. After falling out with his band Skid Row, which Canadian rock singer went on to have a successful acting career, including a four-year stint on the hit dramedy Gilmore Girls? So the lead singer of Skid Row is Sebastian Bach. That's correct. That's the answer. Sebastian Bach was on Gilmore Girls? Four seasons, yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, it's as the lead singer of a, of a rock band. How did I not know that? He's, um, yeah, I mean, he, he plays a minor role in, uh, in Wind of Change. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I had no idea that he had such an impressive postscript. Okay, question four. The Moscow Music Peace Festival was a seminal moment in Cold War rock history, but the concert was not the first Western heavy metal show in Soviet Russia. Can you name the grizzled British rock band that played 10 sold out shows in Moscow in 1987? Uh, I don't know that I can. It was Uriah Heep. I had no idea. Yeah, 180,000 people over 10 shows. Unreal. Yeah. Um, okay, question five. Before they hit it big, which heavy rock band with a fairy tale name recorded a now legendary TV commercial for Pat's Chili Dogs in Philadelphia? Pat's Dog, the clock is never God, I have no idea. Fairy tale name, heavy heavy metal band. No. Cinderella. Cinderella. Okay. Look it up if you get a chance. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Cinderella played the Moscow Music Peace Festival. So yeah. Number six. The association between heavy metal and freedom in Europe didn't end with the Cold War. Five years after the Berlin Wall fell, which former Iron Maiden singer was smuggled into Sarajevo to, Sarajevo to give a secret concert to a city under siege? See that I should totally know and I don't know. That's Bruce Dickinson. Of course, Bruce Dickinson. No, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> okay, two for six. All right, number seven. Um, Cold War themes and imagery often seeped into pop culture in the 1980s. But this global hit by Swedish glam rockers Europe, which many long assumed was about nuclear war, was actually, according to the band, about traveling to space. Mm -mm. 
Don't know. No guess? No. Nope. Final Countdown. Final Countdown. It's a great song. Okay, number eight. Heavy metal was synonymous with debauchery, but even the members of the famously debaucherous Motley Crue were shocked when which hard rock, hard rock legend, in the absence of cocaine, snorted a line of ants through a straw in front of them. That's got to be Ozzy, right? Bingo. Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> I mean, it could only be, yeah. <laughs> okay, number nine. The Scorpion song, Wind of Change, was allegedly and controversially inspired by a boat trip down the Moskva River to a park named for which Russian novelist? <laughs> well, it's Gorky Park. Um, I don't know. Maxim Gorky. Maxim Gorky, okay. Kelly Garney, the founding bassist for which band, was thrown out in 1981 after revealing a drunken plot to shoot and kill lead singer Kevin DeBru. I have no idea, but I wanna know that story. It's a pretty incredible story. It's Quiet Riot. Okay, thank you Bean, for being a good sport on that, Patrick. Yeah, was, where did I come out? Was it three, three, three for 10? I think it's three for 10. Depends what way give you credit for Gorky Park, I think. That is a, that is a failing grade any way you slice it. 